Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. Today, I'll be discussing four drugs. Um, BPP4 inhibitors, GLP-1 mimetics or analogs, sulfonylureas, and miglutinides. So let's talk first about BPP-4 inhibitors. So this class of diabetic medication will inhibit, will inhibit the inactivation or degradation of the GLP-1. So when we eat, when the food, I mean the nutrients, which is the small intestines, there are cells in the small intestines, the epithelial cells that secretes incretins. So we have two incretins. We have the glucagon-like peptide one, and then we also have the glucose-dependent insulinotrophic uh, polypeptide or the GIP. So when you are diabetic, your GIP are responding less, so we will focus on the GLP-1 or the glucagon-like peptide 1. Glucagon peptide 1 are produced by the L cells and what it does is it, um, it stimulates the increases the uh, insulin secretion from the pancreas and decreases glucagon in response to a meal and it also promotes um, satiety which in turn reduces your food intake it will slow down the gastric emptying and then it inhibits inappropriate post meal glucagon release by the liver. So in other words, this lower down your blood sugar by increasing your insulin and decreasing the glucagon and then decreasing the sugar production by the liver. But this, um, in, this incretin has a short life because there's an enzyme or DPT4 enzyme or the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 enzyme will inactivate this uh, GLP-1 in minutes, right? The half-life for the indigenous GLP-1 is between 1 to 2 minutes. So once it released after a few minutes, this is deactivated and thus it cannot lower down your blood sugar. If you are not diabetic, it really doesn't matter. But if you are diabetic, your blood sugar will increase inhibitors by the word in the medication inhibits the inactivation and degradation or degradation of the GLP-1. So what are these medications? So these are your gliptins. Citagliptin, that is your Genovia. And your Zaxagliptin, that is your Onglisa. And then your Linagliptin, that is your Tragenta. So what are the side effects of this medication? Okay. We have headache uh, due to the changes of your blood sugar level. It can also cause upper respiratory tract infections or also can cause UTI because this medication can cause slight, slight imbalance of the immune system. And then you also have GI symptoms because as I told earlier, uh, incretin uh, GLP-1 can cause um, is slowing up your gastric emptying. And it was also reported that this medication can cause arthralgia or stiffness of the joints, right? stiffness of the joints. And this is caused by the cytokine-induced uh, inflammation of the synovium. And this medication can also cause uh, pancreatitis because now GLP has a longer life, half-life. So the more it stays, it can cause overgrowth of cells that covers the small ducts of the pancreas or it can cause hyperplasia so when those blacks uh, when those ducts are black then you've got pancreatitis and then because the insulin release is dependent on the glucose this medication has a lower low risk of hypoglycemia let's talk about the glucagon like peptide or one mimetics or analogs or the glp1 mimetics so as I said earlier, uh, the incretin GLP-1 will decrease blood sugar by increasing insulin uh, release and decreasing glucagon in the pancreas, decreasing the sugar production by the liver, and then slowing down gastric emptying. But GLP-1, once it's released, is released, is being degraded or inactivated by your dipeptidyl peptidase. Um, enzymes or your DPP4 enzymes but thankfully these drugs are resistant 
the analogs and mimetics are resistant to DPP4 degradation. Okay? The indigenous uh, incretin GL21 produced by the small intestines um, has only a half life of one to two minutes. But the mimetics or the analogs can stay longer because some of these medications and injections are given once a week. So what are these medications? So these are the Tide or the Glutide. Sanitide, that's your dieta, that's the first drug of this class in the market. And we have the Liraglutide, which is your Victoza. And then Dulaglutide, which is Trulicity. And then Simaglutide, which is your oh, 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 What are the side effects of these medications? So we have a headache because of the changes of the blood sugar level and then acute pancreatitis. Remember, the longer GLP-1 stays, it will, um, it will cause overgrowth of the cells that cover the small ducts of the pancreas or hyperplasia and that can cause acute pancreatitis. And also GI symptoms because it slows down the gastric emptying. And because the insulin is released, in relation in response to the meal or to a food so this medication has low risk of hypoglycemia and by the way two of these glp1 genetics are now fda approved for weight management uh, weight loss management and these are the liraglutide uh, sesenda and then the uh, semaglutide with gobi let's proceed with sulfonylureas and miglitinides uh, sulfonylurea inhibits the potassium adenotriphosphate channels. When the, AKT, A, when the KATP channels are open, the beta cells will be hyperpolarized, inhibiting the release of insulin. But when these channels are inhibited by the binding of sulfonylurea to the sulfonylurea receptor or the SOL1, the closure of these channels will alter the resting potentials of the cells causing the opening of the calcium channels and the influx of calcium ions inside the beta cells promotes or stimulate the release of insulin. Insulin will be released regardless of the blood sugar levels. And what are these drugs? These are your glyburide, glipimiride, and your glipicide. Um, there was contraindication with sulfonylurea with um, sulfonamide allergies or if you're allergic to sulfa drugs like your sulfamethylazole, bactrim, or sulfasalazine, um, you cannot take sulfonylurea. But it was unfounded, so the contraindication was removed. What remains is the warning on the hypersensitivity to sulfonamides. And because these medications are renally excreted, so we have to be cautious in prescribing these medications to patients with chronic kidney disease. What are the side effects of these medications? So the side effects, there are two major side effects. We have hypoglycemia and weight gain. Hypoglycemia because we are stimulating the release of insulin. And uh, among the three, the one with the highest risk for hypoglycemia is the glyburide. And sulfonylurea are in the beer's list criteria to be avoided to geriatric patients. And the other side effect is weight gain. Um, why weight gain? Insulin is an anabolic. It builds up storage of your glycogen in the liver. It builds up storage of your fats. It prevents the breakdown of your triglyceride. More insulin, more weight. Proceed with liglitinide. So the same with sulfonylurea, it inhibits your KATP channels, but it binds on a, on a different receptor, on a different side of the sulfonylurea receptor and the thing is with this medication the the binding is not too tight so the binding is not too tight so the duration of action is shorter than your um, sulfonylurea so these are your repaglinide and then your uh, natiglinide so this here I have given this once I think once or twice uh, at bedside, uh, the medication Starlex. The biglitinides are uh, metabolized in the liver, so be cautious for patients who have chronic liver disease. And your natiglinide, aside from being metabolized in the liver, it is also renally excreted 
uh, with active metabolites. So use caution uh, for patients with severe severe uh, kidney disease. And what are the the side effects? Major side effects, of course, is the same with your sulfonylurea, um, hypoglycemia, and then weight gain. So that is for today, and then part B, we'll be discussing the rest of the diabetic medications.